To ask or search, I blame thee not, for heaven is as the book of God before thee set, wherein to read his wondrous works and learn his seasons, hours or days or months or years. This to attain, whether heaven move or earth, imports not, if thou reckon right. The rest from man or angel the great architect did wisely to conceal, and not divulge his secrets to be scanned by them, who ought rather admired. Or if they list to try conjecture, he his fabric of the heavens hath left to their disputes, perhaps to move his laughter at their quaint opinions wide hereafter, when they come to model heaven and calculate the stars, how they will wield the mighty frame, how build, unbuild, contrive to save appearances, how gird the sphere with centric and eccentric scribbled o'er, cycle and epicycle, orb and orb. Already by thy reasoning this I guess, who are to lead thy offspring, and supposest that bodies bright and greater should not serve the less not bright, nor heaven such journeys run, earth sitting still when she alone receives the benefit. Consider first that great or bright infers not excellence. The earth, though in comparison of heaven so small, more glistering, may of solid good contain more plenty than the sun that barren shines, whose virtue on itself works no effect but in the fruitful earth. There first received his beams, unactive else, their vigor find. Yet not to earth are those bright luminaries officious, but to thee, earth's habitant. And for the heaven's wide circuit, let it speak the maker's high magnificence, who built so spacious and his line stretched out so far, that man may know he dwells not in his own. An edifice too large for him to fill, lodged in a small partition, and the rest ordained for uses to his Lord best known. The swiftness of those circles attribute, though numberless, to his omnip omnipotence, that to corporeal substances could add speed almost spiritual. Me thou thinkst not slow, who since the morning hour set out from heaven where God resides, and ere midday arrived in Eden, distance inexpressible by numbers that have name. But this I urge, admitting motion in the heavens, to show invalid that which thee to doubt it moved. Not that I so affirm, though so it seemed to thee who hast thy dwelling here on earth. God, to remove his ways from human sense, placed heaven from earth so far that earthly sight if it presume, might err in things too high, and no advantage gain. What if the sun be centered to the world, and other stars by his attractive virtue and their own incited, dance about him various rounds? Their wandering course now high, now low, then hid, progressive, retrograde, or standing still, in six thou seest, and what is seventh to these the planet Earth, so steadfast, though she see, insensibly three different motions move. Which else to several spheres thou must describe moves contrary with thwart obliquities, or save the sun his labor, and that swift nocturnal and diurnal rom supposed, invisible else above all stars, the wheel of day and night, which needs not thy belief, if earth industrious of herself fetch day travelling east, and with her part averse from the sun's beam meet night, her other part still luminous by his ray. What if that light sent from her through the wide transpicious air to the terrestrial moon be as a star enlightening her by day, as she by night this earth? Reciprocal, if land be there, fields and inhabitants. Her spots thou seest as clouds, and clouds may rain, and rain produce fruits in her softened soil, for some to eat allotted there. 
and other suns perhaps with their attendant moons thou wilt descry communicating of male and female light which two great sexes animate the world stored in each orb perhaps with some that live for such vast room in nature unpossessed by living soul desert and desolate only to shine it's scarce to contribute each orb a glimpse of light conveyed so far down to this habitable which returns light back to them is obvious to dispute but whether thus these things or whether not whether the sun predominant in heaven rise in the earth or earth rise in the sun he from the east his flaming road begin or she from the west her silent course advanced with inoffensive pace that spinning sleeps on her soft axle while she paces even and bears thee soft with the smooth air along solicit not thy thoughts with matters hid leave them to god above him serve and fear of other creatures as him pleases best wherever placed let him dispose Joy thou in what he gives to thee, this paradise in thy fair eve. Heaven is for thee too high to know what passes there. Be lowly wise, think only what concerns thee and thy being. Dream not of other worlds, what creatures there live, in what state, condition, or degree. Contented that thus far hath been revealed, not of earth only, but of highest heaven. To whom thus Adam, cleared of doubt, replied, How fully hast thou satisfied me, pure intelligence of heaven, angel serene, and freed from intricacies, taught to live the easiest way, nor with perplexing thoughts to interrupt the sweet of life, from which God hath bid dwell far off all anxious cares, and not molest us, unless we ourselves seek them with wandering thoughts and notions vain. But apt the mind or fancy is to rove unchecked, and of her roving is no end, till warned, or by experience taught, she learned that not to know at large of things remote from use, obscure and subtle, but to know that which before us lies in daily life is the prime wisdom. What is more is fume or emptiness, or fond impertinence, and renders us in things that most concern, unpractised, unprepared, and still to seek. 